So in the previous video, I have shown you how you can use an alternative to the Iris dataset called the Palmer Penguins dataset. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how you could develop a web application for the Palmer Penguins dataset. And so without further ado, we're starting right now. So as briefly mentioned, we're going to use this Palmer Penguins dataset that is provided by this R library called Palmer Penguins. So for your convenience, I'm going to provide that data set on the GitHub of the data professor. And so make note that this data set that we're going to use today was derived from this GitHub library. And so I'm going to show you where you could have access to the data that I have already exported out from the Palmer Penguins library package. So it's right here in the data professor data repository. Find penguins cleaned. So I have already cleaned the data set, so you could also make use of this. Okay, so we're going to use this in this tutorial. Okay, so let's head to the working directory. So I'm going to provide you the links to all of these code files that we're going to use in this tutorial. Okay, so before we begin, let's have a quick recap. And so in the first part of this tutorial series on Streamlit, I have shown you how you could use data directly from the Y Finance library and how we could display a simple line chart. In part two, I have shown you how you could build a simple classification prediction web app for the Iris dataset. And in this part three, we're going to use the Palmer Penguins dataset in order to make a classification web application. So let's have a look at this dataset. Okay, so it has already been cleaned, and here there are a total of so here there are a total of seven columns. So we have species, island, bill length, bill depth, flipper length, body mass, and sex. And let's scroll down. And so there are a total of three, three, four rows. So not including the first row, which is the heading, there are a total of three, three, three. And so we could see that we have already deleted some of the missing values. And so it should be noted that the missing values were deleted totally. So that is the simplest approach that I'm using. And you could feel free to do some imputation of the data set in order to retain more of the data. So the missing value that were deleted could be less than 10. And so please feel free to provide the link to your GitHub page where you have applied some unique imputation approach. And perhaps I could also include it in the GitHub of the data professor as well. So all of you guys, all of us can have access to your imputation and cleaned data set. And so in the meantime, we're going to use this data set that I have already cleaned and it is called penguins underscore cleaned dot CSV. And so in part two, where we built a simple iris classification web application, you might notice that the code is building the prediction model every time that we load the file in. And every time that we make adjustment to the input features, it's going to rebuild the model over and over. And so as some of you have pointed out, this particular flaw of the code I totally agree with you. And so the previous version was built like that for the simplicity of the tutorial. And so in this tutorial, we're going to use another approach where we could beforehand build a prediction model, pickle the object, which is to save it into a file. And then within the streamlit code, we're going to read in the saved file. And so the advantage of that is that there is no need to rebuild the model every time that the input parameters are changed. And so let's have a look at that. Okay, so the code that we're using is called penguinsmodelbuilding.py and let's take a look at the code. Let's edit with Adam. All right, so here, so we're going to use pandas as PD and then we're going to read in the CSV of the penguinsclean.csv here, which is also provided in the same directory as you can see here. And then we're going to take this penguins data frame, take the data and put it into the DF variable. And then we're going to define the target and the encode variable according to the excellent kernel Kaggle provided in this link from Pratik. And so kudos to Pratik for the code that we're using as the basis of this tutorial. And so here we're going to use ordinal feature encoding in order to encode the qualitative features such as species, island, and sex. And so the objective of this tutorial, we're going to predict the species of the penguin. And so if you would like to predict the sex of the penguin, you could replace species with sex and then you could put species in here. 
Okay, so actually this was the exact parameters used by Protec in his Kaggle kernel. But in this tutorial, I have modified it a bit by using the species as the target, where we're going to predict the species of the penguin and the sex and island will be used as the input parameters. Okay, so this block of code here will be encoding the sex and island columns. And in this block of code here, it's going to encode the target species. And in this line of code here, we're going to apply this custom function in order to perform the encoding. And so in this two lines of code, we're going to separate the data set into X and Y data matrices in order to use it for model building in scikit-learn. Right, because here X will be the input features and Y will be the species. So in X, we have six features and in Y, we have one feature. And so here we're going to build a random forest model and from sklearn.ensemble we're going to import random forest classifier and we're going to assign the random forest classifier to the clf variable and then we're going to use the fit function in order to build the model using x and y as the import argument and then finally here we're going to save the model using the pickle library and we're going to use the pickle.dump function and as input argument we're going to use the clf which is the model that we have already built and then we're going to open or we're going to create a file called penguins underscore clf dot pkl. Okay, so let's close the file and run this code. So we could do this right inside the command line. So I'm opening up the command prompt, heading over to desktop, going into the streamlit folder, going into the penguins folder, and then I'm going to activate my environment. And then we're going to run the code. Oh, it's in model building, Python. So I have to make sure to type in penguins dash and then the tab function. Okay, there you have it. All right, so as you can see, the file popped up here and the pickled file has been created successfully. All right, so we're gonna copy this to the previous folder in here. Okay, so let's have a look at the penguins app here. Okay, so the first five lines, we're going to import the necessary libraries. So here we're going to import streamlit as ST, import pandas as PD, import numpy as NP, import pickle, and from sklearn.ensemble, import random forest classifier. Okay, and in this block of code here is the title in markdown format and the corresponding description of this web application. So why don't we have a look side by side? So let's resize the window a bit. CD desktop, CD stream lit, conda activate DP. Penguins. Okay, stream lit run penguins dash app in order to run the application. So it's popping up the window here. Okay, so this is the finished application that we're going to build today. And as you can see, if we change the input parameters, the prediction here will be changed automatically. So we could see, right? And we're also going to get the corresponding prediction probability as well. And so it should be noted here that this web application was much more difficult than using the Iris dataset, partly because of the issue with the two qualitative features that we're using. So the thing is with Iris dataset, if we're using that, it's going to contain only the quantitative features. So there won't be any ordinal features like sex or island. And so under the hood, we have to encode the ordinal features. And for example, for the island feature here, we're going to create three additional columns called Island Bisco, Island Dream, Island Torgerson. And for each of this three feature, we're going to have binary value, one or zero. It has the island being Bisco, if the island Bisco is having a value of one. And so if the island Bisco has a value of one for a particular penguin, then it will also have corresponding value of zero for Dream and corresponding value of zero for Torgerson. And so the same thing for sex, we're going to create two additional features, sex male, sex female. And for input feature here, 
if the sex is male, then the sex male feature will have a value of 1, and the sex female will have a value of 0. So therefore, we will create 5 additional features on top of the 4 features that we have that are quantitative. So that will bring us to a total of 9 features. So that was a bit complicated, but we have already solved the issue for you guys, and the code is inside here. So let's have a look. So here we're using st.sidebar.header user input feature. And so that is the name of this sidebar heading. And then we have st.sidebar markdown. And so we're going to provide example of the CSV file. And the link to the CSV file that is an example is called penguins example. And so you can see that we're providing the link to this CSV file in markdown format. And so you could click on it and it will bring you to this data set. So in order to download this, you would have to right click and then save link as in order to do that. So the reason for having the example CSV input file here is because I have been receiving some comments whether I could include a feature where the user could upload their input file. And so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you that. Okay, so here we're going to download the CSV file and notice that it's providing the extension of .txt and we have to make it CSV. Save it. All right, so this is the input features that we're going to use. And we're going to upload the file. And there you go. The uploaded file are used as the input features here and a prediction is being made here. Okay, so it predicts this input as a deli and with corresponding prediction probability. Okay, so as you can see, there are two possibilities for the input features. So the first option is to import the file as CSV format. And the second possibility is to directly input the parameters by the slider bar. And so under the hood, the code will be using one or the other as the input for the predictions to be made. And so for doing that, we're going to use the if else conditional. So let's have a look further. So in line number 22 here, it is using the st.sidebar file uploader. And so it will give us this functionality to allow us to upload files. And so the uploaded file will go into the variable called uploaded file. And so we're going to make use of conditionals here. And so there will be two scenarios. We're going to use if there is an uploaded file and the uploaded file is not empty, not none, meaning that if the uploaded file is not empty, then we should create a input DF variable. And then we're going to read in the uploaded file or in else then we're going to run this block of code here. And so the block of code here will essentially define a function that will accept the input parameters from the slide bar here. Okay, so as you can see, the conditional have two possibilities. If there is an uploaded file, create a data frame and read in the uploaded file. Else, read in the input parameters directly from the slider bar. Okay, and so notice that the contents of the input will be saved into the same input DF variable. So that will be easy for the following blocks of code. So previously, I've shown you now how you can import the library, write the header of the web app shown here, and along with the description, and then the header of the sidebar, along with the link to the example CSV file here, and then the upload functionality shown here. And then in this block of conditional if else regarding the input features, if there is a file to be uploaded or if not, then we're going to use the slider bar as the input. Okay, so now the fun part comes in reading in the data from the penguins underscore clean dot CSV. And then we're going to drop the species column because we're going to predict that column and therefore we're going to drop it here. And now we're going to combine the input underscore DF to the entire data set of penguins. And so the encoding code that we're using, it is expecting that there are multiple values inside the particular column that it wants to encode. So for example, in the island variable, it is expecting that there are three possibilities, right? The three different island. Or in the sex column, it is expecting that there are two, male, female, okay? And so the thing is, the input feature that we're using here will be from one penguin sample. And so let's say that one penguin sample could have island as bisco. And therefore, it will only know of one possibility. And so this block of code will not work. So therefore, we have to integrate this input features on top of the existing penguin 
when data set so before we might have 333 rows then it's 333 three, three plus 1 so that makes it 334 three, and then we're going to perform the encoding and then there will be two possibility for sex three possibility for island okay all right so now we're going to display the user input in the user input features so right here user input feature is this block of code and we're going to use conditional again and so the first possibility is if there is an uploaded file write out the content otherwise write out the content of the slider bar and then also put a text that we are awaiting the csv file to be uploaded so in this scenario it's telling us that there is no input file uploaded it. And if we upload the input file, then this line of code will be disappearing. Okay, so let's proceed further. And so this is the classification model part. So in the previous part two of the Streamlit tutorial on Iris dataset, we've built the random forest model right inside the Streamlit application. But in this tutorial, we're just reading in the saved file, which I have shown you at the beginning of this video. So the pickled object is called penguinclf.pkl. So we're going to read that in and we're going to assign it the load CLF variable. And then here on line 71, we're going to create a prediction variable and then we're going to assign the value value of the predicted value and so we're using load underscore clf dot predict function and then input argument is df and df is corresponding to the input features either from the uploaded file or from the sidebar okay and so that is df and then on line 72 we're also going to use df as the input argument to the predict proba function and that will provide you the prediction probability okay and so in the block of code of line 75 through 77 it's going to write out the predicted value of the penguin and so here it is predicted to be gen 2 and then on line 79 and 80 it's going to predict the probability okay and so the probability values are shown in this data frame here and so here we can see that it is predicted predicted to be Gen 2 and there is a prediction probability of 81%. So this can be taken as the relative confidence that we have in this prediction. So it's kind of like we're 81% confident that this prediction is correct. However, for other prediction, the probability could be decreased to 67. So as you can see, when we reduce the body mass, the probability decreased. But if we increase the body mass, the probability increased. Okay, so if you're finding value in this video, please help me out by smashing the like button, subscribing if you haven't yet done so, hit on the notification bell in order to be notified of the next video, and comment down below. And so if you do all of the above, it will help the YouTube algorithm know that this content is useful to you so that tutorials like this could be discovered by other YouTube users. And so kudos to you, you have now built the Penguins Prediction web application. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. Please enjoy the journey. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.